Warning, this podcast contains zombies. Duh. <laughs> What's up, everyone, and welcome to the SC9 TV podcast for iZombie Season 2, Episode 10, Method Head. I'm your host, Dom. With me, my co-host, Niggy. Hey. And... My co-host, B. <laughs> I was like, hi. Dram- <laughs> dramatic build-up. We, like, we needed, we needed the dramatic gopher. <laughs> we, we needed the dramatic gopher to come out of nowhere. Bum, bum, <laughs> bum. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Did we all just do that? I think we did. That was great. Um, this was kind of a weird episode. It started off as a Christmas episode. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then it quickly was not. This is true. Yes. I don't even know. <laughs> Watching the episode, I was like, why did this not air before Christmas? Mm-hmm. Seemed a little weird. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it was just a, it was a, and she got two brains. She was in two different brains this episode. Yeah. We had, the, we had the Santa that lasted about two seconds. Mm-hmm. And then she was very, she was jolly for about two seconds. <laughs> yeah. And then super method after brain. Yeah. Yeah. But before all that, the episode actually started off with Ravi sitting down, Liv and Major, to reveal... His findings about the cure uh, mm-hmm. not sticking. Uh, the rat had reverted back to a zombie. Uh, basically gave Major a undisclosed period of time. And, you know, it could be a day. It could be a year. Mm-hmm. Don't know. And then he's like, well, on the bright side, you guys could be having, you know, some amazing zombie sex again. And they're just like, awkward, we broke up. Huh. But they could get back together, considering that was the reason they broke up. This is true. Maybe. I'm sure they broke up for other reasons. That's not the sole reason. No. It's never the sole but, reason. I mean, still a major reason. Though. A major reason for major? Yes. There was a lot of major drugs in this episode. Well, hmm. It was. It was a major decision for Liv. Major wanted to keep going. I majorly agree with you. <laughs> okay. Uh, they also <laughs> they also revealed the news to Blaine, and Blaine is just like you know, just when you pull me out, you know, you, something. What, what's the saying? I, I always botch that saying up. Just as they pull, uh, just as they, you get pulled out, you get reeled back in. Yes, that is it. That's the part I remember. To getting just when they back take in. me out. Just when they think I'm out. Just when they think I'm out, they pull me back in. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. So, Blaine seems kind of happy. I mean, he's not upset over it. I'm sure he's not thrilled with it, but he's I not upset. I don't know cares either way. I think either way, he just deals with what comes at him. Yeah. I think he's been enjoying his, his being a human again for, you know, multiple different reasons. But I think even turning back into a zombie is not going to affect him as much as someone else. No. I mean, he if he stays human, you know, he could go to being a doctor and um, go live in Maine and be all right. <laughs> no? I don't know what that was about. <laughs> she doesn't know the reference. Uh, the actor, David Anders, plays uh, Dr. Frankenstein on uh, Once Upon a Time. Oh, yeah, remember? I'm, like, super behind in Once Upon a Time. Yeah. Oh, he's in the first season, so, I mean, yeah. if you watch the first season, you know he's in there as yeah. a doctor. Yep. I totally don't remember. It's been a while. It's been a while. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so... No, so, yeah, they live in Storybrooke, Maine, so, uh... That's why I was saying. I was joking. He could he could always go back to being a doctor instead okay, of being a zombie. But, that um... Makes sense, yeah. yeah. Um... We, we, we cut to uh, oh, Detective... Oh, he's not Frankenstein. Sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. It's Whale. Dr. Whale, yeah. Sorry. 
Um, That's why I was there. I'm like, what? Yeah. Um, but, uh, doc, uh bleh. Sorry. Yeah, totally got me sidetracked now. Um, Babinaw. We go see, see Babinaw, and, you know, he's, he's sitting in the precincts or whatever, and, uh, his, uh, his partner just becomes a little, little forward. That's the scene I was trying to remember. <laughs> yeah. Woo. <Whew. laughs> She's not hiding that shit no more. No, she went from straight from being just like you know making some weird in- innuendo to just flat out. <laughs> just I'm come like, on over, we could have some sex. Right. I was like, okay then. Yeah. I'm like, because you needed to add the extra. I'm sure you got it the first time, but sure. <laughs> just, mm-hmm. just, yeah. He seemed to enjoy it. He was sitting back in his chair, like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think she's gotten the gist of her weird awkwardness. Is it is it weird thing. awkwardness? It's it's more blunt straightforwardness. But it's awkward. Like there's like it's like this. It's just her, in her personality is slightly awkward. You can you can hear the awkwardness in it. <laughs> it's 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 just it's a thing. Okay then. <laughs> it reminds me of myself. So. <laughs> I am it very, was, very it, blunt, it was, it straightforward. At first it was this innuendo, then she had to point out what she actually meant. That's why it's awkward. But it's obviously something she does a lot, because mm-hmm. he laughed it off. Like, mm-hmm. oh, that was cute. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then the uh, new case comes through. Uh, there is a murder on the set of a TV show, Zombie High, which we've heard quite a bit about, you know, through uh, Liv and... Uh, uh, Peyton, you know, like they, they've gone back and forth and mentioned Zombie High many times. Uh, mm-hmm. And we finally get to see some of it. So what did you guys think of the TV show Zombie High? Would this be a show that you guys would be interested in covering for our podcasts if it was on the air? Well, it's like a, one of those you know teenage shows mixed with Walking Dead. <laughs> you know what? Just go uh, watch um, School of the Dead, the anime, and it'll be a bazillion times better. Yeah. I think it's called that. It scared the shit out of me. I mean, instead, you could just watch a, a zombie show where a zombie is the star. This is true. I don't know, that, that does sound kind of dumb, though. <laughs> That's what happened, I, was I did laugh how they mistaked her for one of the, the extras. Yeah, they they mistook her for an extra. Oh, yes, he knew. They went off and just gave that whole spiel that I just said. You know, like yeah, that that show would be dumb. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're the ones watching it. You know, they're the ones in it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a, a little meta kind of reference to itself. Yeah. Which I love how this show is able to pull off. Um, but yeah, Liv. You know, she comes on the set to examine the body. Um, get some stuff, and she's just, she really, really wants it on this case, and uh, the look, the look that she was giving Babineau, and Babineau was giving back, and it was just kind of like this tug of war of emotion between the two. <laughs> yeah, she was giving puppy dog guys. Oh, yeah. And he's just like, Liv, you know a lot about this <laughs> show, right? And she's just like, Yes! <laughs> He's like, all right, you come help with this one. That'd be like one of like, us trying, like, say we had some sort of, like, detective-ish background or whatever, and we found our favorite show, and we're like, okay, they need our helps. It's kind of like make funny faces and be like, please let us help. That would like that would be like B on the set of Fifty Shades of Grey. No. That's way more involved. <laughs> no. I would not want to be involved in that. No? No. It's all fake, that's why. She likes the real stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> totally drilling and embarrassing her on the spot. <laughs> right, face is redder than her hair. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. She loves us. Um... <laughs> well, that's beside the point. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, she eats uh, Jordan's brains, right? And uh, 
She starts doing some lovely method acting of this this lovely apple that is so red and juicy and and polishing it off so and weird. you know like <laughs> and uh, I, <laughs> and, uh, we just really like, and a big thing of popcorn yeah the thing is yes it was her doing that picking the apple off the tree and he's like sitting there like oh you're stupid and then he's like and then i got popcorn i yeah, thought he, he was really gonna pull out a thing yeah, he's of like i wish i had popcorn oh wait i do yeah he reaches <laughs> That scene would have been utter shit if he wouldn't have done that. I think I laughed for a good couple minutes after that scene. It was, mm -hmm. oh, it was great. It was yeah, great. Robbie it was made, that yep. made that scene. Yeah. Made that scene. I really would like to find out that that was uh, an improv on Robbie's, Robbie's part. Like, the actors. Like, yeah. yeah, like actual improv. Like, Liv was, was in the script, was had the Apple improv. But then Ravi, the actor, the actor who plays Ravi, took it upon himself to do the popcorn gag. Like, I, I think that would have been amazing. So, even you know if, what? and if it wasn't improv, if it was written in, it was written in beautifully, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was very well done. Yeah. But uh, Jordan, being a method actor, uh, didn't exactly like being pranked. Right? We had, uh, we had some pranks going around where... Uh, he threatened to uh, put up security cameras, in which we found out that every single one of them was fake. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't really. He did have cameras in his thing anyway, though. Yeah, well, that seemed the more bed. like his house, not the the trailer. That the 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 videotape that we saw the the sex scene. Um, it looked like almost like a hotel room. Yeah, something like that. So it definitely wasn't his trailer. Yeah, yeah maybe it, was just set up. It, it had like two nightstands on either side of the bed. Not a one night stand, two night stands. See what I did there? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Wyatt, uh, was the the person who killed Jordan on on set. Um, however. Wyatt was supposed to be the actor that was killed off on this season of the show. So it kind of painted into perspective that Wyatt was the one, you know, that, that was going to be the killer. Uh, then they, they threw another um, loop at us, Starly, the girlfriend. Was it Starly or Sarly? Because a couple times it sounded like Sarly, but that's just a weird name, so I went with Starly. <clears throat> yeah, Starly sounds like... I, was, I wasn't sure either. I was thinking Starling, but like, mm. who wants to name their kid after a bird? Yeah. It happens. Oh, I no. know. Yeah, people name their kids the weirdest Portia. shit. Portia? Sorry, anybody out there named Portia. Or Starling. But. I know. It's just. Well, I mean, it, it's not in. It's in. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like. And, I don't know. And. They just weren't clear, like, the, the the pronunciation during the show just seemed to, like, change with every actor and actress, like, they said it differently. Yep, that's so why I couldn't hard to catch on to it. narrow it down. Uh, but in, in the end, it ended up being the, uh, the props guy who was the killer, which uh, mm -hmm. turns out that the props guy had an affair with, um, I forget her name now. <clears throat> Um, Jenny. Jenny was that? What? Yeah. yeah, it began with yeah. a J. Jenny that uh, she died on the you know not on set but after hours of working a late night shift and uh, all this and they kind of uh, ended up blaming Jordan <laughs> for kind of being a diva on set and forcing people to stay late to do thirty takes of every scene that they were you know things like that. Um and. Uh, the props guy was trying to tell her to get out of there. She she wouldn't listen. And uh, so he, he ended up blaming Jordan for it. And that's when he, he put the gun in there, switched it. Because uh, Wyatt was really adamant that he never let go of the gun. The whole, like, the whole was weird. Like, the whole thing was weird. I'm like, yeah. why, why proclaim it when you know you're full of shit? And I mean, it might be because he got so much flack in the past for 
you know, leaving it around, because that we did hear that he left the gun around, you know, all over the place. He'd lose it, this and that. That's to give the prop guy his, his, his idea. But the one time that you actually don't let go of the gun or something like that, you're going to stick up for it when you know for a fact that you had that thing with you all the whole time, especially after you've been ridiculed for for not having it. And it's it's like extras. The the extras in the, the zombie cast are the ones that, like, blew that information out. So... Mm-hmm. It's like, so if they know, everybody knows kind of thing. So I'm sure, you know, he's been confronted. He's been ridiculed for it many times. So I would be adamant, too, that I did. Nope. I had this thing with me the whole time. I never once put it out of my sight. I know for a fact. I'd be extremely adamant because I hate when people Mm -hmm. call me out when I'm wrong, when I'm not actually wrong. Mm -hmm. You know? So I hate when people call me out when I'm wrong and I am wrong. (laughs) So it doesn't really matter, but, you know. I just hate it when people call me out. Yeah. Throw me under the bus, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then uh, back at Max Rager, right? We get uh, Duclerc uh, running his fitness training with uh, with Major. Can I just say really quick? Mm-hmm. This whole Major Duclerc thing was actually really cool. Like I liked it. It just seemed to work well. Yeah. Not not that Major's into what Duclark wants him to do. It's just that, you know, the lengths that they're both trying to yeah, it's each just, other to work with each other kind it was of thing. Really cool, like the when they're they're doing the workouts and like everything and he's like, Oh, they they have to, I don't know, it's just the banter, the chemistry that they had uh, really, really played off well. Mm-hmm. And then we, we see Major going to the leave from that, he bumps into um uh scientist, uh Doctor Locke mm-hmm. who says uh he's a whistleblower he's gonna go do this he gives major like a a thumb drive and said if something happens to me you got to release this to the media and uh uh major turns around and brings it to von de clark i was i was really like oh my god in this like i was like i obviously i was surprised by the whole he find out at the end that he's been listening and and everything and knew the whole whole time that he was just at getting trying you know to trick him Mm-hmm. But like I was like, oh my god, Major, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're turning to the enemy. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean he and, wouldn't have done it without a good reason, but he knew exactly the plan. So it's just whatevs. I was thinking I was going back to him protecting Liv. What is in in my brain was what I was. I was like, well, maybe just you know, it's again protecting Liv. Right. So <laughs> I mean, he passed the test of flying colors, but only because he's been eavesdropping this whole time. You know, otherwise he was probably fucked. Do you remember what Vaughn said when Major gave him the bracelet? Uh, not exactly, no. I think we're going to SETI now or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah something they, along they, you know, they those made lines. A, they made a SETI joke, and then Major's like, yes, he said yes. <laughs> That's why I, I love the banter between them. It's great. Yeah. Um, but uh, two other things. One, one is a little minor. Um, we find out that minor... Has uh, you like you like the pun again? Uh, Miner has has a GPS tracking device implanted, GPS tracking chip, which is not unusual for for animals these days. Mm-mm. Most have them now. That's gonna lead to to some problems. I mean, you can just say that you found the dog wandering and been like. I'm taking this guy home. Well, I, I know they. The, usually here's the, the problem with you're that. You're supposed to do when you find a dog is take it to a place, get it checked, and all that kind of stuff. And right, but here's the problem with that now, and it, it's not just that. It's now taken the second bombshell that was dropped on us uh, this episode, which uh, Blaine is a huge FBI suspect now. Well, he right. always mm-hmm. was, but they tossed him aside because he had alibis and all of that. Right, but now they have connections between the missing people mm-hmm. and the meet cute incident yeah and they're able to tie blaine together to both of them um major has also been a suspect in the meet cute meet cute incident oh uh, yeah and minor and minor is attached to the missing people so that also now places major in both situations 
So, yeah, just finding the dog, that's a little too coincidental now. Um, yes, they can't exactly charge you with anything for coincidence, but... All they gotta do is all they gotta do is tail him. Robbie, Robbie could be like I found the dog. I guess, but all they have to do is tail Major, and Major goes to drop something off in his freezer. He's fucked. Fucked. Well, I mean, they'll ha be in for big surprises when they open that freezer and thaw some of those bodies, and they decide to eat them. Yeah, that there's that. <laughs> Cause they're gonna be hungry. There is that, but I like. The, the police wouldn't be the ones thawing those bodies, though. The police would find the evidence and call in the morgue. Because frozen bodies indicates dead people. So they're going to call in cry CSI, you know, which includes uh, forensics and, you know, the morgue. And they're going to come in and Liv and Ravi are going to have to deal with them. Mm. So. Yeah. That's going to cause a rift. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, you guys have anything else for this episode? Not really. Well, here was... comes another. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, the, the, the thought process is also, but what's going to come first? You know, all of this information coming out or both of them turning back into zombies? Because obviously that's going to cause some stuff when Major becomes a zombie again. Yeah, Unless and I mean. Continue to hide it. That kind of explains his ability to send zombies a little more, too, because there's some genetic code on some level left in his system to be able to, to detect that. So if it was a cure, he probably... If it was a full cure, he probably wouldn't be able to do that. Um, but I also like this. This time we get to see Liv um, from Major's perspective, uh, like what she looks like when she goes into her thought, you know, when she has a, uh, a vision. Yeah, mm -hmm. when they were trying to find the mm -hmm. utopium. Yeah, we've never seen that from, from another person's uh, point of view. No. So Major was like, that's what she looks like when she does that? And uh, it was interesting because Major and Liv have spent a lot of time together, you know, over the last couple episodes, and he's never witnessed that. Um, and it seemed like Major has never had, uh, like, though he was a zombie, he uh, he never experienced the vision so. He wasn't a zombie for well, very long. I don't no, think he even no. no. Basically, she scratched him, and he was in bed for like, I think it wasn't even 10 hours, and then she injected him when mm. he was sleeping, so. Yeah. Yeah. He had like, no, he, like one strand of hair was starting to turn white. Right. Maybe. Yeah, he had just, he had just found out, and then she turned around and mm -hmm. gave him the, what they assumed, what they thought was going to be the cure. Right. <clears throat> um, yeah, so, is that it? You guys have anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next week, the episode is called Fifty Shades of Grey Matter. Peace favorite. <laughs> it's her favorite. Um, after consuming the brain of a young librarian who secretly wrote a hot and steamy erotic fiction... Liv struggles to keep her new sexual appetite in check. Oh, and to keep your ears peeled for a voice cameo from Kristen Bell uh, in this episode, who was in both uh, Veronica Mars and Frozen. So. Also in Heroes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. So. I mean, we, we all watch the promo for next episode, and it looks. Keep Freaking it in hilarious. your pants. Yep. <laughs> she just has this, like, thing where she talks about her not being able to keep it in her pants, and then other big sexy zombie dude shows up, and it goes, and I go, oh, no. Is he a zombie? I, he's a zombie. Remember, he got turned into a zombie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that guy. Yeah, he's a, mm -hmm. yeah, he's a zombie. So he shows up, and it's like, oh, can't keep zombie sex. Immediately what my brain went to. Like, oh god, she's gonna sleep with the, 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 the drug dude. This is gonna be one episode that B will not be missing. She might actually <laughs> even watch it live when it airs. <laughs> Maybe. No, because commercials ruin the mood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no wonder why Netflix doesn't have commercials. 
<laughs> Nikki, where can the people find you? Chill. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Lady Venom 24 L A D Y V E N O M 24. <laughs> Kim, where can the people find you? At H U F I T. Oh wow. H U F F I T Y B U F I T Y. <laughs> oh my god. I can't even get it out. I was gonna make this horrible joke and I can't even say it. <laughs> this is all like where you can message me to Netflix and chill. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, you guys heard that. Hoppity poppity. Tweet her right now for for applications for Netflix and chill. Uh, you you can you can uh, find me down below at phenomenon. P H E N O M E D O M, where I will not be accepting any applications for Netflix <laughs> and chill. Um, find us all and more <laughs> on Facebook, Gmail, G, Twitter, MySpace, Netflix, and YouTube at slash ASOTV podcast. Um, <laughs> ASO TV podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows and Netflix shows until till next week bye <laughs> go, go, go find someone to chill with no. <laughs> oh shit